Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about software testing, in particular unit testing in Java and we'll talk about what is software testing in general and what is unit testing and why we even want a unit test in the first place. Also we're gonna see some real example testing a service using GUnit and Mokito. Okay, so let's start uh, first thing first with what is software testing. Software testing is simply assuring that the software does what it's supposed to do. So let's say we just worked on our software. Testing is just making sure that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do correctly with no bugs. So this is the reason why. Prevent bugs, increase performance, reduce development time and cost and quality control. We want to prevent bugs obviously. The last thing we want to do is to deliver <laughs> a software and it's full of bugs. So we want to prevent bugs by testing it. We want to increase the performance by doing things like stress testing to make sure that our software is performing. And we want to obviously reduce development time and quality control. We reduce the development time by getting the bugs early so we can fix them very quickly instead of discovering the bugs later on. And it's gonna cost a lot of time. So now let's see the types of software testing, okay? So there's a lot of type of software testing. There is unit testing, integration testing, functional acceptance, performance testing, stress testing, regression testing, and many more. So there's a lot of testing and each testing has something in particular. For example, regression testing is made to basically make sure that we don't affect uh, our application. So if you make a new change, we don't want to affect uh, what we already have working. Stress testing to make sure that our application or software can handle a lot of load. Performance testing, same thing. We need to make sure that our software is performing. And obviously unit testing. Unit testing is what we will be focusing on today. And let's see it. So let's see what is unit testing. Okay. Unit testing is basically, we test individual units in component. So we don't test the whole application. We don't test anything. What we test is the unit, a small unit or component, okay? And why we do that? To basically validate each unit work as expected. So what we do, we take in a small unit, generally it's a method or a function, and we validate that this method or function do what it's supposed to do, okay? It's pretty simple. And unit testing is done during the development. So it's usually done by developer. So when you are working, when you are developing, let's say you create a new method, you need to create its test unit, its unit test, okay? So it's done during the development by the developer. And it's usually a method, as I said, we test units. So it's usually a small method or function, okay? And it has this principle of isolation of code because as I said, we just test the small unit isolated from our code base. We don't care about the whole application we just care about this small unit it should do what it's supposed to do and that's it we should validate that it's doing what it's supposed to do and why we do unit testing obviously bugs all tests are done to avoid bugs but unit testing actually help us avoid the bugs early so in the development when we are working on a feature we can detect bugs uh, early in the development so we can fix them pretty quickly regression this is very important because let's say I wrote uh, a method and some tested and then another person came in and actually made some changes to this method that I worked on. Then uh, if he made uh, some stuff uh, that, that is not supposed to do, then uh, the test will fail, okay? And it will tell him, okay, you just make, a, you just make uh, a bad change, so you need to revisit the method, okay? So we avoid the regression. And documentation, this is very important. Uh, unit tests help us with documenting the code because with each method in our code base we have the test so we can basically understand the functioning of the method from its unit test. Be careful with database queries in APIs. Uh, this is a very common issue that people have with the unit tests and with external dependencies because when you want to unit test for example a method it usually have some external dependencies some database or API so what we do we don't actually call the database or API. We don't do that because this is not the goal or the purpose from unit test. We don't care about uh, external dependencies or external interaction. We just need to make sure that the method is doing what it's supposed to do and that's it. It's calling the 
the query, but it's not actually making the query to the database. For that, we use mocking, right? So mocking for external dependencies. So when we have external dependencies in a method, we don't actually call it. Instead, we use mock. And mocking is just uh, a dumb uh, method or dumb object that we use to uh, emulate uh, the real object. And we will see later some real example of mocking uh, in Java. Assertions actually expected. This is how we validate uh, basically our test. We make a comparison between actual, so this is what actual method return, and this is what we expect. So, of course, uh, we need to have the actual equal to the expected for the for the test to go uh, by success. Otherwise, if actual is not what to expect, then it's failed. AAA, a range act as This is a very common technique that we use uh, to unit test. A range, we prepare the data. Act, we actually call the method that we want to test. Assert, we do the comparison between the actual and what we expect. So now let's see some real example, okay? So now let's open the code base. Okay, so let's say the first example we'll see is very basic example, which is we have a util class and we have this very simple method add that add the uh, A and B and return it, okay? So we want to test uh, this uh, method, okay? So we want to write a unit test. So let's go to the test. Let me open it on the side here. There we go. So this is the method. We basically, this is how we write the test. So as I said, we use the technique of AAA, arrange, we prepare the object, act, we actually call the method that we want to test, add, and we give it some values. I give it one in four. And then we assert. Assert is basically we compare. So it's a comparison. What we expect is five. And the actual value is what we get in the return. And then we run our test, obviously. And it should give us uh, success. OK, there we go. For example, now if. Uh, someone come in and make some changes on the on the method then uh, the test won't uh, won't uh, actually pass see so it said that we what we expect is five and what we got is uh, minus three so right here the person working this method was oh i actually made a mistake uh, so let's make it uh, let's correct it okay so now this is a very, very basic uh, example, right? Now let's see a more uh, common use case that we have a lot. And this is testing a user uh, service. Okay, so let's open the test, see it. Let's put it on the side again. There we go. So I have this user service, right? I have this user repository. This is actually what uh, uses the database. So the repository is used to communicate and get the data or make some manipulation on the database, the constructor. And then we have this string method, get user by ID, create user, update user. So let's test each uh, method. So let's test the first one. So get user by ID. So the first thing, same technique, AAA, arrange, act, assert. We need to arrange the data. So the first thing we need to do is to have the user repository because Inside the method, we actually use a user repository, so we need to have it. And if you guys remember, we need to be careful with database queries and we need to mock external dependencies. So this is an external dependencies. We don't actually want to make queries. We don't actually want to get some real database or create a new user. What we want to do is just to mock because we are not trying to test the user repository. That's not the goal. What we want to test is the actual unit this unit, this small method. I don't, oh, sorry, this unit. We don't actually care about uh, the repository on or what it does, okay? So we just mock it. And to mock is very easy. By the way, this is using Mockito. It's a mocking framework in Java. So what we do, use the repository, and actually we mock. So this is what this uh, mock uh, method do. It just simply re returns a mock. It's just a dummy object that uh, mock the user repository. Then we create the user service that we want to test and we pass in in the constructor this mock that we just created. And then we create the user, the expected user. This is what we expect uh, if we call the find uh, by user ID. 
So you pass in an ID, a name. And here, when, this is a very, very important method in Mojito. It's very useful. And this is just, uh, we define the behavior of the find user by ID method of the repository. Because as I said, this is just a mock, okay? It's this method, this uh, object is like a stupid object. It's a dummy object, doesn't make sense. So we need to manually define what each method of this user repository does. So this method of user repository, we need to manually define what it does because we'll be use it in the service. So what I said here, so when we call find user by ID from the repository uh, object and we pass in this ID, we want to return this expected user. So we manually define the, the behavior of the repository find user by ID method because as I said, this is just a mock. This is not a real, it's not a real uh, user repository object, it's just a mock. So now we have all we need to test. So we just pass into the act. In act, we just call the real service method that we want to test. So we want to test get user by ID. We pass in the ID and this is actually for user. And as I said in assert, we just do the comparison between the actual user and the expected user. So we assert equals expected user and the actual user from uh, from the method. And I added here this very useful, uh, very useful method called verify. And what this verify does is simply just make sure that this find user by ID method was actually called inside the method. Okay, so we actually use it uh, just to make sure that the user repository find user by ID method was actually called uh, by uh, by uh, the method that we are testing and not just uh, called by also called with this particular ID. So it's very useful. So we verify that user repository find by user ID was called. We compared expected user with actual user and we run the test and it should go, uh, should pass. There we go, so it's passed uh, as expected. Now let's test uh, the create user. Okay, so we pass in a user and we call the save method from the repository. We all do the same thing, exactly the same thing. We arrange, we act, we assert. So we arrange, we prepare the mock from the external dependencies, which are our repository. We create the service. We have an expected user. We define the behavior, but this time we define the behavior of save because this is the method that we're using inside create. We are using save inside the create user, so we need to define the behavior of the save uh, method. So we say when we call save method with this exact uh, user, then we want to return this user. Next step is act. We actually call the method that we want to test. We want to test create user and should return this actual user. And then we assert, same thing. We verify that the save, so this save was called, okay? And we assert equals, we compare the expected user with the actual user. And we run the test and should the pass. There we go, so it works uh, just fine. And lastly, let's say this, uh, okay, now let's test this update user. And this is a very unique case because we don't return nothing. So we return void, we don't have uh, a return. So let's see how we can test this. We do the same thing again. We create a user repository. We mock, uh, we create the service and we create the user. Now we call the, uh, the method that we want to test, which is update user. But since we don't have a return, so we can't really do the assert because we don't have uh, a return type from this update. But what we can do is we can use the verify that we that we talked about earlier, which is uh, it makes sure that uh, the update was actually called. Okay. So since we don't have a return type, we just need to make sure that the update, so this update method, was actually called inside the update user and called with this exact parameter that we pass in. So let's run the test and it should pass. So verify is very useful when uh, when we don't have a return type. So we make sure that uh, the method will call. Okay, and it pass obviously. Let's say for example, I don't have this 
I don't have uh, so let's comment uh, this line so inside the update user we didn't call the update method of the repository so if I run the test it should fail there we go so it failed because why because wanted but not invoked okay so this is why verify is very powerful because it's actually verify and make sure that we actually called update with this user with this exact user so actually as you can see in the logs actually there were zero interaction with this mock wanted but not invoked so we want update from the repository to be called but it's not actually called so now if i call it the pass the test should pass and not only it makes sure that we called uh, the update but it makes sure that we call the update from the repository with the same or with the exact uh, with the exact user that we're passing so now let's say i made sh i change the user and let's create another user user2 let's pass in the test see same thing we want uh, the argument are different so we actually pass in user right here but in the verify we pass in the user number two so the test won't actually work because as i said the argument are different so not only it makes sure that we actually call the update from the repository but it also verified the parameter that we pass in so this is why verify is very useful especially with return type void that's pretty much it is very this common this use case is very common you have a service that uh, makes sure that calls an external dependencies usually a repository for the database or maybe some other service uh, that calls an api so this is a very common use case that you will for sure encounter and that's pretty much it. Thank you.